Bad news is, well, watch it. It doesn't happen here that often that you get away with a spin that uh, and not hit anything. But uh, Harrison did a great job keeping that truck between the fences. An you issue in the very last lap of practice Ooh, earlier Chris Wendell, today. Did he, did he get into the outside wall? Yeah. Sure, it looks like it. All the way down the right side. See the right front and the right rear. Yeah. Both. Look, he just gets his right sides outside the traction compound on the exit. We saw that happen earlier. That's a pretty big hit, Phil. Yes, it was. Race fans, it's time for those most famous words of motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome our Grand Marshal, the president of UNOH, Dr. Jeffrey Jarvis. On behalf of everyone at UNOH, it's ba -ba 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 Bristol, baby! Yeah, I got the grant, you got me. Hey, man, go to the other side room. The practice at 9 o'clock this morning. Waited out a couple of rain delays, but now we're green and racing at Bristol. Look at the strong run on the outside by Gregson in that 18 truck. He's out of that traction compound we talked so much about, and he's gonna take second away from Bell. Wow. Wow. Cautions that. happen when, when someone's holding you up a bit and you're trying to get out. Oh, oh, one into the wall. Looks like the 50 truck in the wall. Josh Rayom. That had every look of a flat tire. Sure did. Maybe to bring that truck down pit road, maybe work on it. See, this happened right in front of the 44 of Austin Wayne Self, who was just a couple trucks in front of our leader, Kyle Busch. Had five top fives this season. No oh, trouble. Yes, indeed. The 45 going around. That's TJ Bell. Bell had some contact from Friesen, it looked like, down on the inside. A nice job by TJ spinning that thing around, heading in the right direction. He won't lose a lap. Caution for the second time tonight. Bell back there in that 21st position when he has this issue. Remember, Friesen was just on pit road, made an adjustment, just tried to squeeze inside of TJ and slips by. No damage there to the 45 truck or Friesen. A lot of action, just as we expected at Bristol. Remember, Kyle Busch won stage one and stage two at both Pocono and Michigan, our last two races, but he didn't win either of those races. Yeah, I got crashed at Pocono and then got some damage on a restart up at Michigan and battled back, but couldn't get to victory lane. He hopes that tonight is the night. He's already won here four times. Is this number five coming up? Parker Kligerman's had a good 75 truck today. He finished 10th at the end. Ooh, into that first stage. Close situation as they lap around the 10 of Jennifer Joe Cars and the rest of the guys did, and he held on to a third place spot so far. Kyle Bush heading to the green and white checkers for the third straight race he wins stage one and stage two but in those two previous races he wasn't able to finish the job we'll see if he can do it tonight what's happening with this track position they slowed on the front straightaway both he and gregson it looks like more, more coming here that looks like pit road speeding penalties <laughs> So Kyle Busch hit with a speeding penalty ah. and the 18 of Noah Gregson with crew members over the wall too soon. Kyle Busch leading. This is what he sees. Oh, oh contact in front of him. Justin Haley and Kyle oh, gets on, inside of him and the caution clear, is out. It so Cal it's Haley and the 44 Austin Wayne self getting together right in front of the leader Kyle Busch and that's going to bring out the caution. Self is not too happy with the 24 truck of Haley. Looked like Haley dove in the corner. Maybe the truck didn't stick, got into the side of Self, and that truck's torn up from one end to the other. Yeah, he was trying to stay in front of Kyle Busch, just try to st stay on the lead lap. Watch it from Kyle's perspective. You see the 24 and the 44 just ahead of him, and then bam. You think maybe hit the apron with a left front tire, and then that. Kind of well, lost the front end a little bit. He kind of had a bad angle into the corner. Looked like he was really low when he entered and 
certainly uh, slid into the 44 truck right yeah. there. Yeah, watch the 45 of TJ Bell. He makes contact with the left side of the 44 of Austin Wayne Self. Bell running back in the 22nd position. You can see they just get hung together. See what Kyle saw here. Yeah, the 24, you can see the 24, his left tires definitely got down underneath. I think the apron. it looked like he was almost forced down to the apron. There wasn't a whole lot of room down there. I don't think that was a situation where Justin Haley was going to just drive into the drive into the corner and slam him out of the way. I don't think that was the case at all. Well, they've told the 44 he needs to leave the track with all that damage and then report to the hauler after the race and they'll discuss what just happened. That's not the call you want to get on the radio. That adds insult to injury, doesn't it? I've just tore up my truck, and now I'm in trouble with NASCAR. If he yeah. runs into the 24, he's going to be in more trouble. Nemechek inside of Sauter for a position. Five the white flag, flag is out. Five flag. Nemechek and Sauter fighting for third. Sauter might lose another spot to Grant Enfinger. Ben Rhodes has eyes on that spot as well, but nobody's going to stop Kyle Busch. He wins at Bristol for the fifth time. Thank you. In your face. An awesome drive for Kyle Busch. That was a drive fecta. He drove for perfection tonight, won all three stages. I just can't believe it took him 47 laps from the back of the pack back to the lead after his penalty. seven times in the truck series this season and three victories. Is he still smoking the tires while he's <laughs> hanging out of the truck? I think so. He is indeed. Look at that dog. It's thinking what the heck is going on here? <laughs> Kyle will run the Xfinity Series race and he'll run the cup race as well. <laughs> He swept them all before and he'll try to do it again. He's off to a good start. And Kyle Busch did what he does so well. He carved through the field, gets his fifth truck win here at Bristol. Kyle, it was a night where everybody was on the bottom. How did you make the top work? Well, I knew once we got that penalty that uh, that I had to go somewhere other than where everybody else was and I just started grooming the top and it took about 15 laps for it to come in and then uh, then it started going it was pretty fast and um, can't say enough about all these guys though on this uh, on this Banfield Pet Hospital Tundra it was awesome it was awesome when we unloaded we made some fine-tuned adjustments to it and uh, she was really good all day long so I uh, can't say enough about Toyota TRD Cessna Rowdy manufacturing chassis and victory lane here so uh, Joe Gibbs racing engines are always strong can't thank them enough of course uh, an awesome energy drink, incredible bank, DVX sunglasses. Uh, who am I missing? Uh, everybody at KBM, they obviously do a, a fantastic job. All the guys and girls there, everybody that works on these things and uh, make them so fast and make them as fast as they are. So appreciate all the fans as well. I know it's a late night, everybody watching at home, everybody here. It was uh, a lot of fun to, uh, to come through the field like that. It kind of gave me some ideas about the rest of the week. Probably showed a bunch of stuff too, but um, that's what it's all about, man. This is the start of a triple, so hopefully we can get it. I yeah, kept it interesting. Well done. Vince. Hardly made a lap, it looked like that time. Oh, and that is Kyle Larson getting out of shape. Cowell flaps up and open. Wow. Hope he saved it. I Did he not hit anything? That's what I'm wondering. This man just bought himself a brand new set of Goodyear Racing Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> man, he just got, it, it must have got loose. We saw it already in progress right there. Um, so he must have just stepped out coming out of turn four. And just a slow spin because I it, wonder if he was even up to speed or had just gotten up to speed through three and four when it come around on him. Jordan and looks as though the 66 goes around Timmy Hill around and that'll slow the pace down here Timmy for Hill a second. around here breaking much like the 42. I didn't see any contact so that's twice this weekend we've seen cars spin other than a flat tire. Uh, no, no real damage on the 60s. And just a few moments ago, the 88, Dale Earnhardt Jr. had, I would call that an issue right there. Oof. I would say. 
I had a chance to be I a big issue. I got to this thing out, Greg. I can't even drive it. I'm trying not to pull out a backup car today. Time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome our Grand Marshal, Sports Director and Anchor for WJHL Television News Channel 11, Kenny Hawkins. Drivers, start your engines! <laughs> Racing at Bristol. Allgaier in the seven, making the outside line work early. He goes for second. The racetrack, but Joey Logano told me he thought they would be on the top quickly. Caution on the track, Rick. And the 99. A lot of damage to David Starr's car. Get down, get down, get down, right down pit road here. That right front looks like there's some heavy contact. Right front wheel not moving at all. He was near the back of the pack when that happened. Right front's not turning at all, guys. Or it looks maybe up about the middle lane. Wow, car just goes straight. I'm not sure if he got way loose before that and was correcting or had a flat tire. As straight as it was, it looked like a flat tire to me. Some, some I still sort of think both of them are pretty mad at me. A caution on the racetrack again, Rick. Caution has come out one more time. 98 was kind of slow in Eric Almarola. And it looks as though it's a lot of damage to the right rear of that car. Man, that car is hit hard. Right front problem too, ain't it? It's flat pretty hard. I just can't tell. I know the right rear is killed. I can see that it's been. Yeah, the right front has equal damage as Ryan Reed also with quite a bit of damage on the 16. Both the Cup Series and the Xfinity Series right there in the middle. And take a look at what happened way up the racetrack. Yeah, three wide. Yeah, that's three wide. It's just not going to work. And, you know, there's no way Eric Amarola understood that they were three wide. And then. Obviously, this is the accident issue. that finished him off. That's correct. He already had a lot of damage right here. And here comes Spencer Gallagher thinking that he's much slower and going to maybe stay on the bottom. And took Ryan Reed with him. Caution once again. Rick, it was the 16 of Ryan Reed. It looked like perhaps he had a flat tire in the middle of turns three and four. Went straight up the racetrack. Made heavy contact on the exit of turn four. Ryan Reed involved with Eric Almarola on the last caution. And you have to ask yourself, you know, did a piece of sheet metal perhaps rub that tire? It, it was a pretty hard shot. You see it, the movement of the right front now. Something has definitely finally completely broken loose. So you see right here on the bottom of the racetrack, just at the top of the view, running the bottom, which unfortunately, Jeff, is not a good place to be when you lose a tire in the car. Oh, straight up the hill. We saw the speeds carrying almost 120 to 125 miles an hour into these turns. It seems like we see that every week. A car gets in, into a wreck, has damage. They don't quite get the sheet metal or something fixed, and they get in the second. Right wall. near the wall, as now they have just one lap to go. Kyle Busch out front. The top ten, Algar, Logano, Suarez, Reddick, Austin Dillon, Brennan Poole, Elliot Sadler, Dylan Hart Jr., and Ty Dillon. And Kyle Busch wins stage number one. Track is and you have to push. We'll watch as we ride along with Joey Galliano. Look at the pile up in front of him. JJ Yaley had to really check up to keep him getting in front of the guy into the guys in front of him, and that's how quickly trouble can happen. Too hot as we see the 33 of Brandon Jones bringing out the caution. He has two left side tires that are flat. He was 10th. It's got to be very careful here. They don't run inner liners on the left side of this race car. So you see with that so flat left front top, tire how top. low the car is sitting. You can see the whole wheel. So that all those sparks you see, that's not just bumper bars. That could be actually the front suspension. High coming into this race with five races left. You see just got free off of turn four. Makes contact with the inside wall. Not huge contact though, Steve. We've seen much bigger contact where people spin off turn four than that. So... Hopefully it's not too much damage. So the caution comes out 39 laps into the 85 lap second stage. Just 
just a little bit of contact on the left front as they try to pick the car up to put it on the jack. Dale Earnhardt Jr. just a little while ago, take a look. We told you that he was running a little bit higher line. Well, he didn't want to run that high. Up into the wall, he got out of that high groove. And he's already being scored a lap down. He is 17. There are only 16 cars on the lead lap now as there are six laps to go. 18 of Kyle Busch now has a one and a half second lead over Daniel Suarez running second. We just saw Justin Allgaier battling for that second position with the 20. Allgaier another one of the drivers as the win goes to Kyle Busch for stage two. But Allgaier another one of those drivers who's been taking advantage of every line around this racetrack. Yeah, such a short time. And 78 into the wall. Coming off of turn number two, that brings the caution out for the seventh time. Tommy Joe Martin's in the 78. Like lap front. And that's going to put Joey Logano Something's in the broke. lead lap. Come down the road. Come down the road right here. Something's broke on the lap front. The 22 took the wave around at the end of stage two. That put him just one lap down, and then he was able to battle to oh. get. Yeah. Wow. See right there. It looks like maybe a lower control arm. Yeah, something. something yeah. definitely broke. So hard into the wall for the 78. See that left front right there just. So now really it's decision time. I think all of these cars on the lead lap have one set of tires left with 83 laps to go. Um, there's only 40 laps on these tires, but it's now the time you take your last set, Rick. I mean, if you are anybody other than Kyle Busch, I think you have to think about the opposite strategy of Kyle Busch. Watch this. Harrison Rhodes on the bottom of the racetrack. And the 51 car, Jeremy Clemens trying to go outside the Rhodes had a problem, and that was almost a caution. Great job by Rhodes to maintain control. Obviously, he had a problem getting up the racetrack. He's on pit road now. Tomorrow night. Parker. Guys, let's also point out the three-car of Ty Dillon running in third right now. Has steadily worked on that race car throughout the night and got himself into the top five. He gets very loose there. We've got a caution, guys. 62 in the wall. Brendan Gaughan had come to pit road a few times, had some issues with that car, and now has got into the wall. The eighth caution of the night has come out, and this will be a sprint to the finish. It'll take a little while to clean the track up with only 16 laps to go. This is how we got here. You see three wide right here. Jeb Burton was kind of in the middle, looked like he got loose, corrected, and basically just caught the 62 in the left rear. Then the 62's left rear tire goes down. Brendan goes up into the wall. I mean, listen, these drivers have done a great job all night of somehow making three wide work, but it doesn't work the majority of the time. And right there, Jeff Burton, it just turns right. But looking at the fire yeah, under the right front corner, here. perhaps another issue, but without a doubt, yeah. there was contact. It, it looked like there were sparks coming out from underneath the car as he was shooting up yeah. to the right there and caught... Brendan gone. Brendan gone. Obviously not very happy. We saw the Ward Burton Foundation on the hood of Jeb's car. A lot has been said of Ward Burton recently. He he was very vocal uh, when he was driving here at Bristol. Oh, you saw the car. Yeah. So right there, before it turns right, you see the front end move a little bit, like something either mechanically broke or more than likely, perhaps just had a flat right front tire. Unfortunately for the 62 of Brendan gone. Talk about wrong place, wrong yeah. time. He happened to be on the outside. The good thing for Jeb Burton is it was going to be a uh, hard hit in the outside wall that probably was saved by the 62's contact. And there are the flames rolling out from the right front tire. And heard the spotter say, hey, find a fire truck and get out. Fire trucks are located on the infield around this racetrack. You can just find, you'll see one and find it. Just drive Yo, up close The 18 of Kyle Busch. He's been dominant. This is the 186th lap that he will lead the most important. Kyle Busch is going to win at Bristol again. It didn't matter. The car might have felt uncomfortable to him, but it was better than anybody else on the track all night long. He had a speeding penalty early on. He was able to bounce back from that. Very reminiscent of what he was able to do in the truck series race on Wednesday. Also had a speeding pedal that he recovered from and got the win. Now he's two for two.
Camping World Truck Series win on Wednesday. Xfinity Series race win on Friday. He's the only driver to ever do the sweep in the top three series of NASCAR. He did it at this racetrack back in 2010. He's going to try to do it again. The smoke will clear and we will Kyle, see. Now, KB, how would you describe that domination coming back through the field? Uh, great car. All the guys at Joe Gibbs Racing did a phenomenal job and gave me a great NOS Energy drink, Camry. And uh, I want to thank the fans, of course, the Rowdy Nation that's here that's supporting this show, supporting this sweep so far. So hopefully we can close it out tomorrow. Yeah, a lot of them on your side tonight. What do you want to say to them? I just appreciate all the fans, but uh, more importantly, those that wear the 18, we appreciate you, of course, the most. It's always fun to have a better house here at Bristol, and there's nothing better than the night race in Bristol, so it's cool to win here. Two out of three. See you in victory lane. Kyle Busch wins for the second time this week at Bristol. Still, baby. Here comes the 78 as well. Martin Trex Jr. following Chase Elliott around the track. He's moved up to third. I think that bottom will stay good for a little bit. Keselowski with trouble. Keselowski slow. Left front tires down. He's going to have to get to pit road. It's difficult to get to pit road here at Bristol. And you see the donut right there on the two in the left side door. That tells me that he must have had a little bit of contact with somebody as we see another battle for the lead as Eric Jones tried to fight back to the point. Take a look at the two of Brad Keselowski. And we saw Ty Dillon in the 13 get up into the wall, but also an issue. The 47, A.J. Allmendinger. Another look at what just happened. It was right in the middle of the corner and sparking already. So I don't wonder if the right front wasn't down on corner entry. And then right here, everyone's just trying to avoid him as he comes back in the middle of the track. Carson, now Bush to the inside again for the lead. Bush has got to try to time that right. If he can't clear him here, he needs to back up and try to get a try to time that pass off of turn four coming to get the check flag. Yeah, he's going to try to pull what we like to call a slide job, which is to enter the bottom, but slide up in front of the 42. But the 42 wouldn't let him up right there on the exit of two. Almost at him. Coming up. On one lap to go in this stage. One more time around. Oh, a little bump there. Larson moves up the racetrack. Kyle Busch takes the lead away. Contact was made. Down the back stretch they go for the final time in this stage. A lot of congestion they're fighting for. And Kyle Busch coming out of four, he'll win stage one. Ten most of the night. He's running up high. It almost looks like the tire goes down right there it in does. the middle of the corner. Yeah, right there. Well, he's seen a couple. The 43, I think, melted a couple beads on the right front tire, which basically just means that the brake heat has damaged the tire enough that the air comes out. I'm not sure if that's exactly what happened on the 17, but a long ways into a green flag run, 66 laps right there, that's when you would start to see perhaps that brake heat affecting really the tire. check up big time, and when he did, a lot of cars got by him. So trying to make that top line work just a little bit too early. He was 17th, and now, as you mentioned, his fall back to 22nd. A.J. Allmendinger with problems, and things happen very quickly here at Bristol. Smoke rolling out from underneath the 47. He was 21st. Now he tries to get to the bottom of the track. Look at all the smoke inside the car. Yeah, it looks like the left rear tire is rubbing on something. All the lettering on the Goodyear is gone. I'm not sure if it's just the sheet metal pushed in or if the suspension itself has failed, allowing that tire to move around. We'll see what kind of repairs they make on the pit stop. Here's kind of the replay on corner exit. Oh, here you go. It's definitely the sheet metal. He comes down the corner in front of, I believe that's the 37. It's kind of hard to see from that angle of Chris Busher basically pushes that sheet metal in, instantly rubbing on the tire. Big accident between Austin Dillon and Jeffrey Earnhardt just moments ago here at Bristol Motor Speedway. A lot of damage to both the three and the 33. Here you go. You see Austin Dillon dives to the bottom of the racetrack and just spins out. I, he had to have a tire go down or something break on that race car. For that car to spin around as quickly as it did, that wasn't just being loose and not being collected. Something happened. 
But that's Thunder Valley. Things happen and they happen in a hurry. Jeffrey Earnhardt, nowhere to go, running the top, entering the corner, well over 115 miles an hour. Next thing you know, the three slots right up in front of you, heavy contact. Now look how fast the three car spins around. It's it's not a, it wasn't small, it was a slow spin. It just whipped around. And the five, he didn't escape damage. The right front, quite a bit of damage to that car, and look what happened. Yeah, you see the three comes up, the 33 makes that heavy contact, but look back at the top of your screen there, the five of Casey Kane. It's what we say, right, Jeff? It happens in a hurry. Well, he was committed to the top of the racetrack, running right behind the 23 there of Joey Gase, and just couldn't get slowed down. Made contact with the 23. And Jimmy the Johnson, one. Kevin Harvick, Ryan Newman, Kyle Larson, the top five. Check up there. Good job. Kenseth gets the win in stage two. Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, Ryan Newman, Eric Jones. We get to ride with the 14 of Clint Boyer. And just moments ago, the 41 of Kurt Busch just got into the wall here at Bristol. You see, you talked about when do you go to the top. Well, Kurt Busch decided to go to the top and just went a little bit too high. All that tire debris on the top of the racetrack right there, he got into that, and you're out of control at that point. A little bit of contact with his teammate, Clint Boyer, right there. And Jeff, he just radioed to the crew, and he said, that was my fault. He said, I don't know how much longer this right front is going to hang with us, though, after that contact with the wall. And he had just gotten in the top ten, been working on this 41 car. He's going to try and hope it lives, but he's worried about that right front on the 41. Done. The 24 was spinning. Remember, we talked about the playoff guys. The 24 of Chancey Outlet looked good on points, but this is going to be very costly if he has heavy damage. The 13 does have some heavy damage. And the 24 was running six, in sixth place. Smoke coming out of the 43. That's been for a few laps. He actually had a black flag with the white cross. Take a look. The contact there with Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick was exiting the top. Looked like he was in the middle lane. The 24 leaving the bottom. Looked like he thought he was going to have the middle lane. Makes contact. Yeah, I think you, I think you know. I think the four was trying to go around the lap car and just didn't know Chase Elliott was there. Now it's up to Alan Gustafson, this 24 car crew, to try to get this car repaired. Hard into the wall is the 34. Big hit. That was, that was a big hit. Landon Castle in the 34 slams into the outside wall. Big impact on the inside wall. Just touched the inside wall, then comes back around. Hit the outside wall hard enough, the front tires came off the ground. Couldn't tell from that angle if there was contact or how he got spun around between him and the 32. I just couldn't tell by the time he was coming into view, he was spinning. Gonna look at it a little bit earlier. So we see the 32's running the top. Lana Castle's running the bottom. Still can't really yeah. tell. Didn't look like there was contact. It just got loose right there in the middle of the straightaway. The 18 of Kyle Busch with one lap to go, looking for his 40th Cup Series win. Down the back stretch for the final time. Kyle Busch, get out the broom. You just swept at Bristol.
Bristol, and I know the fans love to see that. They've all come down to see Kyle, which is a very cool thing. And his quote on the radio afterwards, take that. It was clearly a big celebration for Kyle Busch, who wins here at Bristol. And he's getting some booze. <laughs> and a lot of cheers as well. That one seemed to mean a lot more, Kyle. up the three fingers that one seemed to mean a lot more he said take that why was this one this triple sweep so special that one was a lot harder <laughs> uh, man eric jones put up a whale of a fight i had that was all i had i was running with my tongue hanging out my arms are jello and my throat hurts but uh man that's awesome just uh, can't say enough about everybody on my joe gibbs racing team Adam Stevens and the guys are phenomenal. Um, car might not have been perfect, but uh, I'm, the, I never, I'm never perfect. I never feel like we're perfect. Um, but this Caramel Camry was fast. So, uh, so proud of these guys. So proud of my team. So proud of Joe Gibbs Racing. So proud of Rowdy Nation. This one's for you. Obviously, the fans love it. There are some booze, though, and you kind of feed off that, don't you? I don't care. Make the noise. Who cares? All right, Kyle Busch. We'll see you in Victor Lane, which is just right here, KB. So the fans have all come down to the fence. Very cool scene down here, Rick. And look what he's being handed. A nice broom for the sweep up here at Bristol.